Welcome to the channel. In the last episode, Canis picked up Devrau Linda from SRF Boatyard in Harlegen and cruised across the Wadden Sea in the Netherlands to his mooring in Markham, Friesland. It's summer now, and Canis learns more about his boat. Hi there, it's still April 2020, and I'm in London, and in lockdown. So again, we're looking back, this time early summer 2019, when I had my first in-depth look at what condition De Vrouw Linda is in. At this stage, my mindset is to get the boat across the English Channel. So, has the boat got electricity? In essence, no. This is the fuse box. Has the boat got lights? Sort of. The navigation lights are there, but the cables are not connected to anything, so no nav lights. Has it got gas for cooking? It's a long cruise to Calais through the canals of Europe, one might get a little hungry. And that's a hard no. It was the first thing I ripped out. Has it got water? Nope. There is a water tank and a pump and plumbing, but as I found out later, the water has been sitting for four years and the tank needs an overhaul, to put it mildly. So, what has it got? Water in the cabin bilge, oil in the engine bilge, and leaks everywhere in the roof, and the list goes on. I decided there were three things to do. Clear out the water, find the leaks, and get rid of the condemned mast as a priority. Nico, the owner of the mooring, hooks me up with mains electricity, and this is a luxury as for the last five years I've lived on my narrow boat with only 12 volt electricity. I can use tools, electric ones. I lifted up the floorboards and there was plenty of rainwater in there. This was a worry as this was the exact scenario that destroyed the hull of the Jolly Rotter, a boat I nearly bought 18 months prior. However, there was good and bad news. Good news was that Chris Cable, the previous owner, had covered the inside of the hull with engine grease and this was protecting the steel. The bad news was that Chris Cable had covered the inside of the hull with engine grease and it was disgusting. The cabin bilge was now dry, but where was the water coming from? Well, it turns out it was coming from the mast. Rainwater was trickling down the mast and into the mast bilge. It had overflowed and filled up the rest of the boat. I sealed up the mast and it never has leaked since. I found little leaks in several places in the roof and as a temporary fix, I sealed it with silicone. Next was the oil in the engine bay. Rob Cable told me that Debrow Linda was given a nickname by those who knew the boat. It was called the Oil Tanker. Let's have a look at what else is in the engine room. This is a pump, and it can be connected to the engine's main shaft with a drive belt. It pumps water from the canal up onto the deck, and this is used to hose the deck down. I have yet to try this out. This is an ancient French diesel generator. It is hand cranked and I have started it and it does generate electricity but the motor leaks diesel and it makes a funny clunking noise so I turned it off. As you can imagine I haven't started it again. You can see on this label that it is rated to produce 2750 watts at 230 volts. But it's an antique and that's a project for another day. The big steel box above the diesel tank was the gas locker. The access is above on deck but the gas had to go, as the gas lines were not safe. Next job, removing the mast. I had a plan to start chopping bits off the top of the mast, and to maintain balance, remove bits off the counterweight at the other end. This didn't really work at all, and I only ended up taking off those bits. 
So that's as far as I got. Nico, my landlord, has a crane at his wharf 200 meters down the canal, and he would take it off with his crane. Nico is another wonderfully funny, generous Frieslander, and the plan was clear. Chop the counterweight off and lift the mast out. So off down to the wharf, and the mast was taken off and dropped into the water and tied to the side of the boat. During this period, several trips were made between the Netherlands and Britain, and I started to reassess my options. My original plan was to cross the English Channel by the end of the summer, but Rob Cable had another idea. Why not get a local carpenter, Tice, that's short for Matthias, to make a new mast? It was at this point I realised I had an opportunity here. Why not get local Dutch craftspeople to do the things the Dutch are good at? This would mean staying another year in Markham and moving the boat in summer 2020. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Tice knew how to carve a mast. This was one he was working on recently. So I agreed. The fee? 6,000 euro. I love it here, so it wasn't hard for me to make the decisions to stay. So that's what I did. So guys, I want to say thank you very much for watching this episode. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you wish to comment, please comment below. In the next episode, Rob and Tice collude, and a plan is hatched. Kenneth and Rob cruise to the Rat in Snake and drop off his old mast to be cut up into floorboards and pick up the wood for the new mast. To see the Rat in Snake, tune in to the next episode.